Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 discussion. So this is going to be a pretty interesting discussion regarding a summary we got uh, in the 120s, very late into Arc 5, uh, regarding a line in that summary that never came true. I actually just did a video about a Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel summary that never came true regarding a character named Alko, a Baryan Observer. He might have been the 8th Baryan that was supposed to give Kaito a card that Kaito was going to pass on to Yuya. However, this card and this character never appeared in Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, and once again, that was towards the end of Zexel, very similar to how this summary was towards the end of Arc 5. The only difference is this was a lot more minor. This was really one line in the episode 127 summary that never came true. It wasn't about a character that never appeared. It wasn't as major as that, but I still found it to be equally as interesting. And I really do want to talk to all of you about this and what you think this line could have meant and what the original intentions may have been, because I honestly think this one line could have had pretty major changes on how Arc 5 played towards the end, especially regarding one character. So, I will read you the summary for 127, and you probably will all immediately know the line that is out of place here. So, Reiji's father, Leo, begins to talk about the day the world was split into four. However, he also brings up to Reiji how he feels about the girl, Rei, who took his place to stand up to Zark. And as his father does, Reiji realizes the scheme his mother Himika has following. I imagine it would be has been following. I remember DMC did not translate these because I think he was busy. These were translated by someone else, but they were confirmed to be accurate. Uh, and DMC, this was posted October 5th. DMC translated the cast list October 8th, three days after these summaries came out. And there was no mention of Himika. There was no mention of that line. But the line that I am going to be really looking at here is that final line of the 127 summary. As his father does, Reiji realizes the scheme his mother Himika has been following. Now, when this line came out, there were... This was... A few days, I believe it was a few days, maybe a week after opening 6 had just started, the final opening of Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5, and there's a shot in the final opening where a few characters are notably missing. Almost the entire cast of Arc 5 is in that final shot, but a few characters that were missing were Leo, or the Doctor, you know, characters that we consider to be evil, and another character that was missing, Sergei was missing as well, was Himika. And that was one that a lot of people thought was kind of peculiar. In fact, there were a lot of theories at this point. There was one theory video that I really enjoyed that came out right before this summary did that claimed Himiko was going to be the final villain of Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. And this is what I had to say in my analysis when I first read this summary way back almost two years ago. Starting at the top, the fact that Reiji's mom is brought back into this to me is crazy because... Literally about 20 hours ago posted this video that Reiji's mom, Himika, is the main antagonist in Arc 5. And now I'm not saying that she is the main antagonist by any means, but the fact that we have not heard her name mentioned in about 70 or 80 episodes, he makes this video, and then the next day she's involved in the spoilers to a pretty massive degree that Reiji realizes his mom has been planning something is pretty incredible, so I have to give him a lot of credit there. Now, no, she's probably not the main villain, but the fact that she might be a villain to some extent still is an incredible call. Now, yes, this is also coming from the person who thought Seto Kaiba might be the main antagonist of Arc 5, so, you know, one of the best calls in my opinion. I'm not so great at predicting the future, but I thought it was interesting that that theory video came out, and then this summary comes out that Himika is planning a scheme and Reiji and his dad both realize it. If you forget 127, 127 was an entire plot episode. In fact, I just watched 127 in full just to be completely sure that Himika was not mentioned or brought up or her scheme was not mentioned or brought up at all in this episode, and it never is. Reiji mentions Himika, he mentions his mother once, and it's this scene where he talks about how his mom started to go crazy when Leo left, but there was nothing about some, but there was no mention of some kind of plan or evil intention that she had, and this line specifically says, 
as his father does, as Leo does, they both realize this scheme that Himika was following, but Leo does m- not mention Himika once in this episode. Leo does not realize anything. So even if you want to say, well, maybe the summary was a little inaccurate, but Reiji still remembers how bad Leo's abandonment affected his mother, well, this summary clearly states that Leo was supposed to realize something as well about the plan that Himika had set out. And based on this line, you could imagine that whatever scheme Himika was plotting, it was probably not a scheme that Reiji would have wanted to realize and not a scheme that Leo Akaba would have wanted to realize as well. I immediately thought that there could be some kind of double cross going on here where Himika was working with Reiji, but behind the scenes was also colluding with Leo Akaba. Who knows? But the possibilities were really endless. Himika to this point was a woman who seemed very fit to be a bad character, seemed very fit to be an evil character down the stretch. She was someone who found Reira in a war-torn town and, yes, brought him out of that town, but used him as a dual soldier, ran these tests on him, really was not a good parent to Reira at all until after he became a baby again, which was, I believe, episode 141. She tried to take over the LDS school. Remember, she went in with three LDS top students and tried to invade that school and buy out that school. I mean, she was a nasty, nasty person and seemed like this evil turn that she might have had towards the end. It wouldn't have really felt that out of place. But, of course, the core of this video is that this plot line never comes to fruition. Himika is mentioned barely at all in this episode. She doesn't appear at all until, I believe, episode 136 when she starts watching the duel between Zark and the Lancers. She doesn't speak um, to Reiji until episode 141, and she has a complete change of heart when she does come back kind of into the main storyline where she feels horrible for what happened to Ray, where she feels personally guilty. And I always felt that that kind of went against the Himika that we saw the entire first 120 episodes of Arc 5. So I feel like an evil twist would have been interesting, but with how much was going on at this point in time with Arc 5, I'm assuming the writers decided to scrap it because they felt it wouldn't have really fit the entire plot. It would have felt a little more messy than it already was because a lot of stuff was going on. But the moral of the story here, guys, is there clearly, in my opinion, was some kind of plot line for Himika to follow. Whether that was going to be a minor plot line or a major plot line, I thought maybe she could have ended up dueling with Leo against Reiji and Yuya, or maybe she was going to have some say in turning Rey, you know, she was going to be like the mastermind behind all this. Who really knows? But clearly, whatever route they were intending to go, they scrapped it three days later when the cast list came out. There was no mention of Himika. Himika wasn't even on that cast list. But 127 was a bit messy because... In 127, Yugo and Yuri were also both on that cast list, and neither of them appeared in this episode. Neither of them spoke in flashbacks. They were not present at all. So 127's cast list was wrong, and the summary was inaccurate, which is very weird, and I think that's more signs that there clearly was a last-second directional change. The original storyline with Himika, we really will never know, but it is very interesting to think about and very interesting to speculate. But anyway, guys, I'm going to cut myself off there. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Please leave all your thoughts down below on what route you think they could have went regarding Himika, what the original intentions were, and if you would have thought that might have made the end of Arc 5 a little better, or if you think it's probably best that they just did it the way they did regarding Himika's character. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the constant support. I will talk to you down below, and I hope you have an amazing day. I'm not